We modified this to create a tiny and powerful graphics card that the small form factor community deserves. Welcome to NFC. It's not easy being a small form factor enthusiast. You have to be comfortable with paying more for components and making compromises on performance, especially when it comes to graphics cards. Unfortunately, graphics cards are getting bigger and come with higher power requirements. Will we ever see flagship performance in a small form factor like the GTX 1080 Ti Mini again? This is the RTX 4000 small form factor Ada generation GPU, but you probably don't know how unique this tiny toy-like workstation card really is. Designed for professionals with a price tag to match, its performance is impressive considering that it only consumes 70 watts. Soon after its launch last year, Nvidia released the full-size RTX 4000 ADA. Both cards are technically identical, except the larger RTX 4000 ADA has a power limit of 130 watts with an external power connector, a bigger cooling solution, and higher clock speeds. The price alone kept it out of my reach but I convinced one of our Patreons to send me there so that I could make something special. Thanks, Matt. The RTX 4060 low profile is similar in size and costs far less than the RTX 4000 small form factor. One is an entry-level gaming GPU and the other an entry-level workstation GPU. The RTX 4060 has higher boost clocks and a higher power limit of 115 watts. Out of the box, these two cards offer the same gaming performance until you level the playing field. The full potential of the RTX 4000 small form factor has been chopped off at the knees due to the 70 watt power limit. We can't change that through the use of software or a BIOS flash. However, a shunt mod can be used to trick the card into thinking that it's only getting half the power it needs, thereby leading it to pull more. Shunt mods can damage both the GPU and the motherboard. Matt's willing to take the risk, so I'm using a shunt mod to double the power limit up to 140 watts. More power equals more heat. The stock heat sinking fan won't be able to keep up with the increase, so I designed and made a custom heat sinking shroud. I went a little overboard with the design, but I wanted to overperform. I don't want to pull more than a safe limit of 75 watts from the PCIe slot, since it's not sustainable without eventually causing permanent damage. I soldered a cable to the shunt resistor and used a 6 pin Molex connector with a 3D printed bracket to secure it to the PCB. This will provide extra power from the power supply directly to the card. This is the Baby Kingpin 2.0, inspired by EVGA's Kingpin series. Dual 67mm fans sit on top of a thick full copper heat sink mounted to a full coverage copper cold plate. The back plates are made from thick aluminum and provide additional cooling for the rear memory chips. The fan bracket is made from steel and provides the strength needed for the new additional weight of almost 900 grams. The best part of this design is that it's modular. Three small fans can be used for a slimmer profile by swapping the bracket and shroud. That means that it can be made to fit inside the 3.3 liter Skyreach 4 Tiny brickless. The fans, bracket, and shroud can be removed from the card without ever needing to remove the heatsink. Imagine if all cards were this easy to disassemble. The test bench I use consists of the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D CPU running at stock, 32GB of Kingston Fury DDR5 8000 running at 7600, and the ASUS Strix B650E Mini ITX motherboard. The core clock settled in at a stable 2.5 GHz and the memory was set to match the full-sized RTX 4000 ADA at 2250 MHz. The Baby King pen absolutely dominates the RTX 4060, the RTX 4060 Ti, and comes within reach of the RTX 4070 when gaming, all while consuming less than 140 watts. It effectively bridges the performance gap between the RTX 4060 Ti and the RTX 4070. The new heat sink and fans do a great job keeping temperatures below 70 C even with the fans locked at 30%. It easily set new records on 3D Mark benchmarks like TimeSpy, and I wish I had more time to push it further. Workstation benchmarks are equally impressive. 
The small core overclock allows the Baby Kingpin to beat the full-size RTX 4000 ADA across multiple applications. The Baby Kingpin is a little monster. It's depressing to know that it isn't something you could buy off the shelf. There are a lot of people that would love to have a card that can game and true through rendering workloads with power efficiency like the Baby Kingpin. Hopefully a powerful small form factor GPU is around the corner. The price of the RTX 4000 puts it out of reach for most people, so I can't recommend it for gaming alone. It cost me about $240 in materials to craft, but if you absolutely must have the smallest, most powerful gaming slash workstation system, then a modified RTX 4000 small form factor Ada generation GPU is the answer. A huge thank you to my wife and family for their patience and support, to Josh and Matt for trusting me with this project. Join our Discord via the link below. Links to our store page and website are posted there too. I look forward to reading your comments. As always, thanks for watching.